Today, we're continuing with the Halloween theme, and I'm going to be reading you a Belfast ghost story. So, hold on to your seats, and don't wear white knickers. Let's go. It was a beautiful summer's evening, West Belfast, 1986. Ah, <gasps> oh, those were the days before six kids and a fat family. I'm breaking out of my room. We lived in a street close to the Falls Park. From our house, you could see the playing fields and the black mountain in the distance. The sun was high in the sky and still bright enough to shine through the bedroom windows. In the orange glow, I could see the old bug beds in the corner and the detail of the brackets on the ancient wardrobes. Oh, I never liked them. They always had to be closed when I went to bed. From outside, I could hear the calls and cheers of the other kids playing football. That was when me and my brother saw something that terrified us. Wonder what it was. Baddies bar arse. <laughs> I was 11 and my brother was 12 and we were scrapping. My ma gave us an old clip around here and sent us to bed early. I should just right. Get used to fucking bed and give my head peace. Melters. Our older siblings were still outside enjoying the final rays of sunshine. And the upstairs house was quiet and empty. It was too early to go to sleep. My brother jumped down from his bunk and we lay beside each other like two runner beams. Talking, laughing, messing about. What would you do if you turned invisible for a day? What would you do if you had a million quid? We kept our voices down but my mum was downstairs and if she heard us it'd be a lot more than a clip on an ear. We'd been lying talking for about 45 minutes and then it happened. We had no warning. No sense of what was about to reveal itself in that moment. A figure swung down from the top bunk, head and shoulders, like it was on a spring. It had long greasy hair and its face was sunk in on itself. It happened so quickly, so unexpected like. Me and my brother barely had a second to process it. Head and shoulders, greasy hair. That sounds like your woman Claudia Winkleballs. I bet she was her. <laughs> <laughs> She's a fucking bastard, her. We're not sure if the face was of a man or a woman. That's definitely Winkle Balls. It swung down and then back up in a flash without making a sound. Me and my brother looked at each other in horror and then pulled the covers over our head. Did you see it? Was all we said for the next minute. I was desperate for him to say no. When he stopped and stopped being a wimp. But he didn't. He saw it. We're both dead. Still, silence in the room. Not a sound from the tap bunk. We couldn't move with fear. We couldn't even shout down to my man downstairs. Nah, that wasn't a ghost. That was no apparition, no glow. Whatever that head was. It was a fucking real person in the room with us. Pervert. We lay there for hours, hugging each other. Waiting for the practical joke to be revealed. For the relief to come from beneath the covers, we watched the sunlight dim and then darken into night. At some point, we must have fallen asleep. Where the fuck's the rest of the story? I'd have trailed her up bunk by the roots for a chick. Trying to sell shampoo to kids. Be it Claudia, you blind. That's enough ghosts for one day. But tomorrow, me and my sham are going ghost hunting in an abandoned shopping centre. It's called Park Centre. Here we go. <laughs> Thank you.